Hey, what's up, guys? I want to talk about warping. Now, warping is a way to stretch audio so it fits your track. It fits the BPM. So it's a good way to kind of preserve the pitch or, you know, stretch things and mold sounds to your will. And it's uh, not as e it's not as hard, and it's not as easy at the same time. All right, so we have something here. We know the BPM, but let's pretend we don't. Right, completely out of whack with a metronome. All right, I'm going to show you a way to get beats locked in tight every time. Right, you want to right click up here and set it to uh, quarter notes. Right, so we'll set it to quarter notes. This is just an example. Right, so you're going to use this grid as a reference up top, right? Because, you know, if you do this, you'd be like, all right, so where's, okay, there's, you know, the second beat, all right, and there's the beginning of the second bar, or that's the end of the, the first bar, all right, well, where does all this go? It's not, it's not that super complicated, so what we're going to do is this, this is going to be stupidly easy. You have these warp markers here. And this one's yellow, and this is kind of your start point. So you want to find your start point and set one one here. Usually it'll do that automatically. What you want to do is you want to find another kick and drag that to its nearest marker here. And you'll notice that the rest of the track just kind of follows suit. Uh, this is, you know, a beginner kind of example. And we'll notice that we are more or less warped. Right? So you'll notice it sounds kind of funky. That's because we have our warping preserve, preserve thing, our warp model thing here, right? So what it does is it will preserve a particular part of it and uh, have, you know, a back and forth um, playback. So what it's doing, we'll just do like play once. What it's doing is it's, I'll give you a good example, is it's chopping it up and then playing it like as a preserved transient. Right, you can hear that. Right, and that's pretty close to his normal BPM. If we slow it down, right, it's playing each 16th as a note. And, you know, it's chuckling along here. There's different ways of going about it. It can detect the transients, which works uh, a lot of the time. Uh, it detects when it goes from quiet to loud and it says oh i should preserve that i'm going to preserve that right uh but sometimes transients will start here and it'll do something weird so it's really up to you to kind of figure this out depending on like where you're pitching right you can hear that graininess if you set to uh, a 30 second You can really hear the grains, if you, and if you set it to an eighth, right, you, you get the artifacts. And these are artifacts, and they don't really sound nice. All right, so sometimes uh, there's different. You'll you'll need to try out a different mode. And there's tone, which splits it up into grains instead of transients, or uh, a predetermined uh, predetermined uh, grid. It'll split it up into grains. So the grain, a very small grain size, will preserve. Uh, you know, single note material. Right, and that sounds a little bit better. I'll bring it down in pitch. Right, you can hear those artifacts and it kind of destroys the sound, but a lot of the times it, that could be a desirable effect, especially on a vocal. If you listen to Burial's first album, I think, he does a lot of this. Experiment with different grain size. All right, so this texture and this uh, this will detect certain texture in your track or in the in the audio, and uh, it's the same as tones. Like it'll find grains, but then it'll kind of not repeat it. It'll pick apart little areas, so it'll kind of give you an illusion that the audio is kind of making sense. So a very large grain size, you can hear it. Right, works works kind of okay on vocals, not so much for percussion. So, 
yeah, I'm not using it that well. For percussion, I'd stick to beats because it preserves transients really well, especially if it's at the 16th. So if you have it on 16th and beats, Right, it's kind of grabbing this, but you know that's kind of what you have to deal with sometimes. There's repitch, and this is basically how you know turning down a record would sound. This is it preserves it, but it brings it down in pitch. So you don't hear the you know the artifacts of it trying to keep the same pitch in the computer and doing math to make it fit. Right, that's repitch, and that's what repitch is doing. You can go all the way up there, like a 45 on crack so uh, there's two new modes and these are completely different uh, what this does is this is it uses a complex form of pitching kind of like melodyne there's two forms and one is more CPU intensive than the other so what it does is it this one kind of preserves it preserves the trans it preserves the transients and all that fun stuff but it makes it sound a little bit more hollow and that could be an effect you're looking for. It kind of works well on whole tracks. Like we're using it, we're setting it to an extreme value, but you really get the idea. Uh, we have a, an option section for Complex Pro. So this takes the formats, which is like uh, the higher frequencies. It'll, it, I, I've, read, I've read about it before. It splits the sound into different bands and... Uh, uh, pitches them separately and then sums them together because like lower frequency material obviously has a longer wave so that's that requires a different form of like pitching as to like higher frequency material where the waves are really close together and yeah it's it's very they, they say they recommend don't use this unless everything else fails but yeah all right i have talked long enough about that let's warp something else so again, we have this guy here. Uh, we will have it set. All right, let's warp it within the window here. So it's pretty easy. So you'll find. Yeah, let's 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 say we don't know where it starts. All right, so we'll find something in common. All right, well, there's, there's this clap here. So I'm going to find this clap. Set one one here. I'm going to get rid of this warp marker, and then I'm going to be like, okay, I want to warp this clap so it's on the offbeat right i want to warp this clap over here i can physically grab it right and that doesn't sound good so i can go to the next one but like, okay i'm going to warp this clap over here and then this clap over here right and then i'm gonna have to go in here okay these are these are on 16ths so i'll just shimmy them over shimmy them over so this is kind of like a different way of going about it and then once i'm done that i can go back to the start or i can just completely leave that oops so i can be like all oh, right i know where that is so i need a beat before this all right so then i can warp it well, warp it here and confuse myself what am I doing? Yeah, I'll warp from here. All right, so now I have this and it's looped and it's in it's in it's in time. All right. Hopefully that makes sense. Alright, we're gonna we're gonna warp a whole track now. This is where it gets kind of confusing for people. Especially me. So what you want to do is you want to find the beginning of the track. So right, right around here is where the kick starts, because just just how it was rendered. Uh, typically, you'll have, you'll find you know the area where it starts. All right, kick starts here at the zero point. Set one one here. Sometimes it'll you know automatically make warp markers. You want to get rid of that. So what you do is you just hit warp warp again, and it won't preserve the warp markers next time. So what you want to do is take a look at your grid and make sure it's on quarter notes so you say okay I need this to be synced up right so what I do it's a, it's a famous hack <laughs> no is I go right to the end double click and then I can stretch it out you notice at the top there I can stretch it out 
and then I can go cool and I can zoom in and say all right I need to refine it kind of like how you would when you're if you're ever mixed on like vinyl or CDs CDJs you uh, kind of refine your mix as you go all right so, so that's cool <laughs> make that go a little bit faster All right and then as you go in the track you'll notice that it's it's a little bit off maybe unless we're extremely perfect so then you just zoom in and then you want it to just hug that line zoom in more there you go you're fantastic keep on going awesome and you'll notice that you are warped in this entire track sooner or later. Right? Super cool. So then we'll we'll pitch it up to whatever it is. The 128, perfect. Right? I didn't even look at that. Alright, 128. And there you have it. Right? Alright, well that's warping. I uh, hope you learned stuff. Uh, you can use it to great effect. You can completely mangle sounds, or you can make them fit together. But this is kind of how it works. All right, hope you learned stuff, and uh, have a good one.